Hello everyone. Now let's talk about corrosion once again, but this time a little bit more in detail. As we know that metals react with air to form an oxide layer, but how fast and thick this oxide layer will depend upon the reactivity of metals. It is not necessary that every metal reacts with the same element present in the air to form the same compound. For example, when we talk of silver, it reacts with the sulfur present in the air to form a layer of silver sulfide. That is the reason why silver gets black after a long time. In a similar way, when we see of copper, copper reacts with moist carbon dioxide present in the air to form a green coating. This green coating is, a, is of copper carbonate. Iron rust is something that we have seen in our day to day life. Let us perform an activity to find out the conditions under which iron rust. Take three test tubes and put iron nail in each of them. In the first test tube, you put anhydrous calcium chloride, which is a moisture absorbing agent. In the second test tube, you put hot distilled water and pour some oil to cut off the air supply. In the third test tube, you put a normal water with the half nail dipped in water and the upper portion exposed to air. Leave the setup for few days. You will observe that the first test, two test tubes does not have iron rusted, while in the third test tube, the iron nail is rusted. In the first test tube, the iron nail does not rust because calcium chloride absorbs all the oxygen present in the test tube. In the second test tube, the iron nail does not rust because the hot water has lost all its oxygen and also the surface is covered with oil which cut off the air supply. In the third test tube, you can see that water and air are in rich amount. That is, it is rich in oxygen. So we conclude from this experiment that oxygen is essential for corrosion. But we also know that corrosion is wastage of metal. So we have some preventive measures also. The basic and traditional ways for preventing corrosion is oiling, greasing and painting. But there are many scientific ways also to prevent the metal from corrosion and avoid its wastage. The few techniques which we are going to see is galvanization, chrome plating, anodizing and alloying. We will see these techniques in details one by one. The first technique is galvanization which is a method of protecting steel and iron from rusting by coating them with thin layer of zinc. Now this is done by dipping the metal into the bath of zinc. Even if the zinc layer is broken, the iron or the steel do not get rusted. Why is it so? This is because zinc is more reactive than iron and reacts with oxygen to form an oxide layer. This oxide layer prevents the iron to get corroded. This layer of oxide will break the supply of oxygen to iron. Now, this will prevent the iron from rusting. Now, let's have a look on the second technique which is chrome plating. It is also called as chromium plating. It is a technique through which a thin layer of chromium is electroplated on the metal. Now, anodizing is also another method of forming an oxide layer of aluminium. This aluminium oxide layer prevents the further corrosion of the metal. We can also put dyes on these oxide layer to give them an attractive look. The three techniques we have studied are practiced in our day to day life. Now let's have a look on the fourth property that is alloying. Now alloying is an important technique for improving the properties of metal. An alloy is a homogeneous mixture of metal and metal or a metal and a non-metal. It is prepared by melting a primary metal and then dissolving the other elements in definite proportion. For example, when we see iron, it is soft in pure state and stretches easily when hot. But if we mix carbon in small amount, it becomes harder and strong. Another example of iron is when we mix nickel and chromium in it, we get stainless steel, which is hard 
and also rust free for the same reason the dubai burj khalifa the tokyo television towers and the shanghai towers are made up of alloys the metals property can be increased or can be enhanced by mixing other substances in it like we improve the hardening property of metals by alloying for example gold in 24 karat state is soft but when we mix 2% of copper or silver we get 22 karat of gold which is useful and hard in making ornaments if one of the metal in the alloy is mercury we call it as amalgam but when we talk of properties like electrical conductivity and melting point of alloys it is lesser than metals for example when we say brass an alloy of copper and zinc and bronze which is an alloy of copper and tin is a poor conductor of electricity but we use copper in making wires solder an alloy of lead and tin has a very low melting point and is used in welding electrical wires now the prevention of metal from corrosion is a very old technique our ancestors have used it in back 400 bc for preventing an iron pillar near qutub minar they did so by formation of magnetic oxide layer on the pillar and then painting it them with the combination of salts then heating and quenching was applied in this way we can see that prevention from corrosion is an old technique so this brings us to the end of the chapter in this chapter we have studied what metals and non metals are what are their different physical and chemical properties we have also seen the occurrence of metals and their extraction and at last we have also seen corrosion